Once you see this, you won't be able to unsee this. Alrighty, welcome back to another video. Before we get started, let's go ahead and go over a couple of things. This video does assume that you have a baseline understanding of the JAWS rule set. That includes how to light encounters, how to get the JAWS multiple, and how to collect your gear awards. Much like chess, pinball is about finding a solid opener in a main line in order to find more points and progress further through the game. With this particular gameplay, we're gonna see a few differences here as we are playing on the JAWS Premium. The three main differences that we're gonna find with the Premium compared to the Pro is that on the left-hand side, you're gonna have drop targets instead of stand-up targets. Up the middle with the captive ball where the boat's at, you're gonna see that actually pop up, revealing a shark underneath the play field that acts as a bash toy. And then we also have the upper play field that's located via the left ramp or the wave ramp or the marina shot. These changes can drastically change the gameplay overall. Looking at the play field itself, one thing to notice right off the bat is that with the upper play field, we have a new spinner shot or a real spinner shot up there that acts as the orca wheel to the ship. By hitting that, it gives us what's called a wheel award. And after you shoot this wheel, the ball will just feed down to the mini flipper. And from there, you can actually hold it and avoid hitting any switches and just use your action button to select whatever option is available via your LCD screen. So you'll see this just kind of rotate through. I think it goes from the top to the bottom and it just rotates all the way back through. Hit the action button to make your selection that you want. And if you don't want to do that, as soon as you just release the ball and it hits a switch, that's the wheel award that you'll have. Now that we've established all that, it's time to learn how to close beaches. And that's a huge part to this game. Once you see this, you won't be able to unsee this and it'll make complete sense if you're not sure what all this means just yet. Now, why does closing beaches matter? Well, for one, it will boost your scores. Two, it'll light other features such as Pippet. And it also gives you potential to have an extra ball which means more points or your game is a little bit longer, which if your game's longer, that also equals more point opportunities or more progression through the game. Now to properly explain this, I want you to look at the five major shots that are out there with the encounters as you have the left spinner, the left ramp, the center ramp, the real spinner or the real shot at the pond and the right ramp. Each major shot represents a beach. Up the middle's the north beach, we have an east beach, we have a west beach, we have a pond, which is at the rill, and then we have the marina, which is at the left ramp. Each beach is located at each major shot. And with each beach, you have beach goers that are available on that shot, and you have three of them. You also have three stand-up targets that are out there, and these targets are known as the shark tower targets. So whenever you hit one of these shark tower targets, it ends up identifying a beach goer on a corresponding shot. If we look at the far right, we'll see the shark tower target between the right ramp and the real spinner. And whenever you hit that target, that will light one beach goer at the right ramp and at the real shot. If you hit that middle stand up target, shark tower target, that will light a beach goer at the center ramp. And then if you hit the far left shark tower target, that will light beach goers at both the left spinner and the left ramp. As soon as you hit that shark tower target, beach goers start flashing at your corresponding shot. You hit that shot, then that insert will go solid, indicating that you have added that beachgoer. And after you've added three beachgoers total, you will then start a 15 million point hurry up. So to piece this all together and wrap this up in a nice little bow, the basic sequence you're going through is shark tower target, flashing beachgoer, collect it beachgoer, collect all three beachgoers, then close the beach with the hurry up that's at 15 million. And here's where we truly need to understand the benefits of closing a beach. Now, each time you close a beach, you get a scoring boost at that shot. And that boost is a percentage value of your hurry up collect. Now, if all of a sudden your brain is just shutting off and you're thinking, oh no math, don't worry about it. Simply put, if the shot is blinking and there's a hurry up going, hit it, collect it, it boosts the value of your shot and good things happen. But if you're wanting to know exactly what is happening, that's actually very easy to explain. Every single time that you close a beach, you're getting a scoring boost to the shot. And that boost is just a percentage value of your hurry up collect. And this percentage value is set at 18% for your very first collect. And after that, it goes up by 2% every single time until you close all the beaches. So you're looking at your first beach will be 18%. Your second beach will be 20%, third, 22, 
fourth, 24%, and your fifth one is 26%. And to give an example of this, let's say your first hurry up collect happens to be 10 million points. Well, because it's worth 18% value, that makes that shot worth 1.8 million more as soon as you enter an encounter or you do something else with that shot. If your second hurry up, you manage to get the max value of 15 million, we just take 20% of that 15 million and that's the buff you get, which happens to be 3 million points. There is an important caveat to this, that once you close down all five beaches, you will then enter rescue multi-ball. And when you enter rescue multi-ball, from a gameplay standpoint, you are gonna reset the shot values to that as you'll have to do it all over again. And what this essentially means is that you as a player, you have the ability to make some big brain strategy moves. And that essentially becomes from what beaches you wanna to choose to close in what order you wanna do it and what encounters you plan on playing. It's a little bit more in depth, but for me personally, I think that that's what makes pinball fun. I think it opens up a lot of pathways to discovering your game, to enjoying the game from a different point of view. And that leads me to the fun, fun part of this discussion, and that is the Hasselhoff strategy. In pinball, I like to compare this to chess a lot. If you wanna play pinball at a higher level, you wanna get better, whether it's scoring better at your home or whether it's playing better in competition, Having a plan of action is a huge deal and understanding what you plan to do as soon as you plunge is a big deal because if you're the type of player that doesn't have that plan, you're gonna find yourself just going 10 different directions at once and that's not really, that's not really good for efficient gameplay and to get to where you need to be because if you're playing either a good player or even an elite level player and they know what they wanna do on the game, you're behind the eight ball on that. So that's what we're trying to avoid. And that's kind of what I'm trying to teach people right now to start thinking about these things. Because again, I've said it several times, it does make the games a lot more fun. So what is the Hasselhoff strategy? Well, the Hasselhoff strategy in a nutshell is just prioritizing closing beaches at the respective shots before playing any of the encounters. And by doing this, we're gonna increase the value to that corresponding shot. There is many different variations of this, such as the gear options we choose, the encounters we choose, and which beach is our priority for closing first as we wanna boost the value to certain shots because we know the encounters we wanna play. So there's a few things that I wanna do right off the bat. In order to do this, I really wanna prioritize the gear binoculars. The reason for this is that every single time I collect that, I can hit the, or the shark tower targets at least three times to get two beachgoers out there instead of one. So you're basically doubling your amount of beachgoers out there. The other thing to really keep in mind as well, you wanna prioritize hitting the left ramp or the wave ramp as soon as possible, especially in competition because that makes Quint Shack deterministic. So every single time you hit that left ramp at the very first part of the plunge, the OR should already be there and then you're using that left ramp to spell C in Orca. So whenever you get to C, O-R-C, you end up lighting Quint Shack at the right ramp. And Quint Shack will give you kind of, I guess they're kind of like mystery awards, but with this one, it is deterministic and it's typically gonna be light beachgoer. At least that's what I've seen before in the competition I've had. So if I'm wrong, please quote me down below, somebody correct me, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be light beachgoer as that's typically what I see. So I make it a priority to hit that as well. The main line to this all is making sure you get your gear which you can do this via either the quick shot or if you're on a premium, your will award. One of your will awards is gear off the beginning, which is a big reason why you might even benefit more from just short plunging, getting a ball to your right flipper and just going straight for that left ramp because then you get your C to like quench shack. You have an opportunity to hit that will, they end up spinning it and then use your action button to select light gear because then as soon as you hit the right ramp, assuming you do have binoculars lit and you've, you've done this correctly, you will then get your binoculars and your quint shack right there. So that's a two for one shot. And that is very important to understand how these different features mesh together because then you're not wasting any shots. You're being very efficient with your time. You're being very efficient with your choices and with your shot making. And that's super important if you wanna be able to compete at a high level or if you just wanna score more points overall. And again, have more fun. That's what we're talking about. That's what it's all about. Now, in terms of encounters, I don't worry too much about which beach is the close first, although 
I could take this a step level, a step further and try to focus more on closing like my center ramp and my right ramp as my third and fourth beach. However, I just take whatever the game gives me and I just go from there. My three main modes that I love to play, especially with the beaches closed, are Raft Attack on the right, Beach Panic, which is on the left ramp, and Night Swim, which is on the far left. Now, Beach Panic, a big reason why I love to play this mode, especially during beach closing, is because, well, you can just ride the center ramp and the right ramp over and over and over again. And if you have your plus 15 seconds and you have your 2x boost from the encounters that we talked earlier, that equals a whole lot of points. And you should be able to get to over 200 million points just by doing that general strategy right there. Now that does involve you making your shots, of course, and it does include how are the game setups and, and all that, but it generally is pretty sound strategy to get your shots boosted in areas in which you can do combos and the balls returning back to the flipper in a safe manner. So keep all that in mind. And plus you can't go wrong either doing a combo to the right side, because if you do happen to find yourself in a spot to where you've collected a lot of gear or you've lit a lot of a lot of gear, you can then collect it at will on the right hand side. And then of course, at some point, you're gonna be in the end game of the strategy as you'll wanna eventually just pull the rip cord pretty much to know when it's time to go ahead and close all five beaches and get into rescue multi-ball. Sometimes you may do this early on ball two. Oftentimes you'll find yourself doing this on ball three. If you happen to do this on ball one for whatever reason, well, you, my friend, have just pretty much gotten through the whole entire game at that point. That's generally the whole strategy right there. And if you guys have any questions on that, just let me know down below. I will be more than happy to answer it. If you have a better strategy, please let me know. I, I'm always open to hearing about it. But until then, let's go ahead and get to the video and I'll see you guys after this cut. All right, first things first, you can always plunge for a skill shot, all right? And right here, I happen to hit that skill shot and I'm okay with letting it go because I'm on a premium and here's exactly why. I have two options right now. I can either keep short plunging like you're seeing because I wanna try to hit a quick shot, which will light my gear or get a ball on a flipper, hit the wave ramp and then you can collect your first wheel award. And what I like to do is light gear. So there's two things that just happened right there. It's very important. One, I spelled O-R-C on the left ramp because O-R, the letters were already spotted. So now I got Quint Shack on the right and I lit my gear. So I made sure I got binoculars because binoculars are important and I got Quint Shack. So I lit a beach goer and I have binoculars. The reason why binoculars are important is because pretty much that means that every shark target or shark tower I hit, it actually gives me two beach goers instead of one. So very quickly, you just saw through all that talking by hitting various shark tower targets and everything, I have all the beach goers already out there. They're all out there already. Look how quickly that happens. So that's what's so awesome about this opener is that we already have people out there. We're already rescuing. We're already in bounty hunt because I spun the reel. There's a lot of things you can do on top, but again, we're gonna try to focus as much as possible on just the beach goers and closing beaches. So the biggest thing that you can get out of this too is I personally like focusing on center ramp, right ramp. Reason being, I can get, get to where I need to be quicker. I can get eight beach goers super quick, which is 15 million for an extra ball. Or if you have extra balls turned on, you get another extra ball, which is awesome. So we're on the shark spot at point. So I have two hurry ups going at one time right now. You see the center ramp, right ramp going. That's my hurry ups, 15 million countdown. But I have gotten some multi-ball progress right now as a matter of fact. So that's why you see the ball just kind of hung up there on the left end lane. But again, we're not worried about it. We are closing beaches. And right there, three million out of 15. I get a three million value. It's very important. That's like the best value you can get at this point, at least up front. So hopefully that's making sense so far. From here, I'm still trying to close different beaches and that's what you're seeing with the orange insert going nuts or going fast. Another beach is closed. So instantly three beaches closed right there. Now what I wanna do is I wanna try to get into multi-ball. 
So that's why I'm hitting those yellow shots at this point. I'm sure everybody out there, if you watched this before, you understand how to do the chum, how to get to your first multi-ball. And that's pretty much what you're seeing at this point. Also spelled Orca right there because I hit that wave ramp twice. And now I have Quinn's Challenge, which is lit on the right inlane. So that's what you're seeing here. I don't care about that for this particular video. We're not worried about that. I am more worried about closing beaches. So we're going for that again. And the most important part to understand with what's happening as well, you do not want to close all five beaches just yet. Because if you do that, you'll end up in rescue multiball and you'll lose your value after that. So you'd have to redo that all again. I want the boosted value to stay there as I'm playing through these encounters and other modes. That's really my goal right now. And this isn't the most optimal gameplay at all. And I'm perfectly fine with that. I just want to see, I just want people to see what is possible. One key thing that you're going to see right now, I'm going to keep hitting that, that boat captive ball right there for 15 seconds boost. So the biggest thing that you need to understand about that is when you hit that captive ball, it lights your encounters. You hit it again for your shark bonus. Always do that. Hit it one more time. It gives you plus 15 seconds on your next encounter. That's all super important. Another reason why it's very important is because now you notice the shark stays up, even during a multi-ball and during a mode. So my main focus now is just to hit that shark. I got to hit it five more times. And as soon as I do that, you notice encounter bonuses are happening. And then you notice right now, 2X scoring is possible. And that's huge. I want to do that. So I'm using this as a utility multi-ball. I'm not concerned about cashing anything in yet. I'm more concerned about just boosting value to my mode. And at the same time, you notice gear awards are happening, so on and so forth. And if I remember right, this isn't the cleanest raft attack mode right now, but I don't mind taking it in this spot just because I know I can use multi-ball to get to my 2x scoring, and I know I have extended timer for the extra 15 seconds, so I got plenty of time to do things. That being said, the goal of raft attack is you basically want to hit the right ramp and then the fin target. You want to do that over and over again. You could even hit the left ramp and do that too, and you would get there. Now, of course, I end up draining super fast, and you can't see any of that, but that's okay. You get the gist of what I was needing to do or what you're supposed to do in that spot, except just don't drain right there. So I'm going to pause it right here at the beginning of ball two. Just to recap, here's what's important. I want to keep driving this home. Close beaches. Get your gear, the very first gear you absolutely want, is binoculars. The reason why binoculars are so powerful in this spot is that every time you hit a shark tower target, that adds two beachgoers instead of one. So you double your progress towards that. And that's very important because then you save your time doing hits, doing extra hits to the shark tower target. And on top of that, if you don't have binoculars with it, you end up kind of getting a little bit locked out because you start feeding frenzy, which is another feature or little mini mode tied to the shark tower targets. And when that starts, every time you hit a shark tower target, you end up getting some feeding frenzy points that you don't cash in until you get your bonus after the ball. The caveat to that is, is you cannot light beachgoers anymore while that's going. So you're basically playing, I can't remember the exact time, 30, 45 seconds, probably 30 seconds worth of time to to basically just spam the targets as much as you can. By getting binoculars early on, you kind of avoid that and you avoid being in beach goer or beach spotter gel, right? We want to find the beach goer. So that's very important. Get binoculars early on. So to recap that, short plunge, hit your quick shot, or if you're on a premium, let the ball come down to the right flipper, hit the wave ramp, hit the wheel, and then use your action button as that's spinning around on the LCE, you'll see it, or rotating through all the options, use your action button to select light gear. That's one way you can do it. Now, you could do it a multitude of other ways. There's many ways to approach this game. This is just the pathway towards this that I found that's just the easiest to achieve as many beachgoers as possible if you're wanting to do this type of strategy. All right, so we're going to start ball two, and here we go. All right, there's the plunge out. And at the same time, we got Hammerhead Shark in the background. Again, not worried about that. We're basically still just showing beachgoers. And at this point, I'm wanting to light my encounter. Huge, huge thing right here. Every time you light an encounter, always get your shark hit. 
because that'll light your encounter boost. Then you want to do it one more time for your plus 15 seconds. And then you drain super quick, just like I did right there. But that's okay. That's okay. Concepts. We're going over concepts right now. So starting ball three right here, we got a level two skill shot and we're going to get it right there. That's just good for basically some points and lighting gear also. But during ball save, I'm going ahead and taking my shots at that captive ball. And of course, I'm not going to complete it. That's okay. Let's see what I opt for right here. And ideally in this spot, I want to play Beach Panic. I don't want to play Pond Attack. I don't want to play Scars. I want to play Beach Panic. And there's a huge reason for this, and hopefully you see it right here on this gameplay. So we got our plus 15 seconds. That means we're at 75 seconds at the beginning of this encounter. So my goal right now is to try to get my scoring up to 2x. That's priority right there. If you want to keep playing the mode without 2x, perfectly fine. I just want to show how you can start to maximize points a little bit. There's different ways you can do it. This is just one way you could do it. So we got our 2x, and this is a great spot. When you're in this spot, literally all you have to do is center ramp, right ramp. Just do that over and over and over again for the whole entire mode until you're ready to cash out. And you're gonna see that right here. There's a lot of stuff going in the background. There's a lot of good things happening because we did so many quick shots and everything and skill shots. We have lots of gear we can keep collecting, which happens in the background. And then you see the Beach Panic Awards going up well past 10 million already. And this is without multipliers on it. Now we get to sell our gear because we got to that point. Good points right there. But again, center ramp, right ramp. That's my only focus. Center ramp, right ramp. I cannot say that enough. That's your combo right there. And you'll notice the left ramp is now flashing red and white. That's indicating that we're ready to light our encounter jackpot. And you can see it right there on the LCD, shoot wave ramp for encounter jackpot. So now our encounter jackpot slipped. Finn comes up, we hit Finn for the encounter jackpot. Plus we get a plus one X machete based multiplier. So right there, no multipliers done on it, just beach closing. And we end up with 165 million right there. We could have easily done a machete with that but we didn't. That's a little bit more of another level to this. And for those that know what machete is, it's that orange insert to the left. You drop down all the drop targets on the left-hand side or stand-up targets if you're on a pro, that lights your end lanes right there. And now, since we did that, we're gonna go ahead and just get out of rescue multi-ball. And I'm gonna go ahead and just, or I'm gonna get out of, I'm gonna get to rescue multi-ball. That's what I'm trying to say. So that's where we're at right now. And again, Many different ways you could do this. That's the great thing about Keith Elwin games, that there's a lot of different ways that you can play this. There's a lot of different strategies involved. And this is just an example of a type of gameplay that you can do at home or even on location to try to break 500 million. And if you play it optimal, you will end up with one to 1.5 billion points doing this. Now you gotta survive a little bit again the strategies involved entirely depend on game setup, depends on your skill level, and it depends on a lot of factors with that. So keep that in mind as well. It's not always just one size fits all. This is just another way to play the game. Now, if you're in rescue multi-ball, of course, you wanna rescue your beachgoers. The blue insert out there is the shark, and you're trying just to save everybody from that. And you get through all this, eventually you'll light the captive ball at the boat or the boat captive ball. You hit that once, then that fin target comes up and it moves from left to right. And you just spray and you hit that target as much as you can to collect a bunch of super jackpots. So that's really the build that's happening right now. Rescue jackpots building up the super jackpot value right now. But yeah, that's the Hasselhoff strategy in a nutshell right there that you just saw. And as you can see, once things get going, it starts piling up pretty quick. And we're doing this for the most part without even focusing on machete, which is pretty cool. <laughs> you know, if you focus on machete, of course your points can get any, even higher. So we're gonna keep getting our super jackpots over and over and over again. And yeah, as soon as that's done, victory combos right there. And that's the entire gist of this type of strategy right here.
And I'm excited about this game because I found several other different strategies that I will present in videos very, very soon, probably within the next couple of weeks as this one releases. And then of course, we'll start to move on to some other content. But if you have another strategy that you like to use, what is it exactly? I'm curious. I want to learn just as much as just the next person. I'm always open to hearing the different strategies, strategies that are out there. And I'm sure there's a bunch of you out there that have figured out very, very optimal ways to play this game. And that's the joy of pinball. It's a lot of fun to unlock this puzzle and to figure these things out because it just makes the game that much more enjoyable. All right, so we're out of that right now. There's our total 382, 150. I'm gonna pause it right there. That being said, that is the Hasselhoff strategy. Again, just to go over it real quick, you wanna get your gear, you wanna get binoculars, you wanna collect that as fast as possible because that makes your shark towers put out two beachgoers instead of one. And you basically just wanna close beaches, but you don't wanna close them all. I personally like to do the center ramp, right ramp for sure. If you do nothing else, at least do those two ramps because it'll help you a ton as you enter beach panic and modes like that, or even night swim, which you didn't see on this video, but you can have a pretty significant night swim as well. So those things mold or mesh pretty, pretty well together with that type of strategy. But if you have any questions or anything like that, or you have a strategy of your own, please share them down below and I will get to them as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.